Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a review of the Mini Cinch by We Are Memory Keepers. This is a book binding tool that you can create your own journals with. So at the end of this video, we're also going to be going through step by step on how I make my journals. Unfortunately, the Mini Cinch doesn't come with any of the accessories, so I did have to buy the binding wire separately. And I just bought the branded ones, but they do sell bulk on Amazon of the same ones for much cheaper. So this is what comes in the box. This is the Mini Cinch. Um, it's pretty small, but pretty heavy and it feels relatively sturdy. So now we're going to test this out with a sheet of paper just to see how the hole punch itself works. This little stopper on the side is just what we use to hold our paper in place. There's three different settings that give you three different lengths between the edge of the paper and the first hole. So as you can see, here's the first cut. Now on the packaging, it says that it can hold and punch up to 14 pages of printer paper. So I'm just going to test that out right now. As you can see, I struggled a little bit with punching this. It, I did have to put most of my weight into it, but it did cut through properly. One thing I do see though is that there are little bits that uh, didn't punch properly or that folded with the paper, so it doesn't give you that crisp of a cut when you're doing all 14 pages. Now the use of the stopper on the left side is to actually hold your paper in place while you're making cuts for larger pieces of paper. What you want to note though is that if you put your last hole into the stopper, you're going to get this gap in your pages that you might not necessarily want. So you do want to go two in before you make your next punch in order to get that even line of punches on your journal. Once you have all of your journal pages, you're going to want to add the wire next. So they have these little hooks on the side of the cinch that you lay your binding wires on, and then you can place your papers on top of that. As you can see here, I'm just giving you an example. We're not actually going to clamp this down because when we make our full journal, I'll show you the whole step process. I just don't want to waste one of my binding wires at the moment. But here you would take it once you have all your pages and you would just clamp it down with the clamp in the back and it would press it together. And this here is an example of one of the first journals that I made with this. And as you can see, I've got all the pages clamped down. I've been using this notebook for a few weeks now and I haven't had any issues with it. It's been relatively sturdy, none of the binding on the wires has come undone, and yeah, it pretty much feels like a journal you'd buy at the store. So now I'm going to go through how I make my journals, and for this journal today I'm going to be using watercolor paper. This is a 90 pound watercolor paper, so it's relatively thick. Um, the thicker the paper you have, the less sheets you're able to punch at once, so I was only able to do about three at a time. So here's a time lapse of me doing the punches for my journal. I was only able to do three pages at a time, but altogether this only took me 10 minutes to do 25 pages for my book. Once you have all of your paper cut, we're going to move on to making our own cover. The first thing I did was cut out a scrap piece of paper the same size as the paper that I had punched previously. 
And then I have this cardstock that I printed one of my designs onto that we're going to be wrapping over top of our scrap sheet of paper. So you want to cut out your cardstock just a little bit bigger than your scrap sheet of paper so you have enough room to fold the edges over. Now I'm taking double sided tape and I'm going around each edge of the scrap sheet of paper. You want to make marks on where your paper is on the back of the cardstock and we're going to use this in order to score the paper to make it easier to fold over. Next you're going to want to score those lines that you drew on the back of the cardstock. I'm using a mat and a palette knife in order to score the edges. You can use anything at home that has a sharp edge to it that is enough to dent the paper but not actually cut through. So once you have your edges all scored, you're going to put your scrap sheet of paper back in and take off your double sided tape and fold over the edges of the cardstock onto the back. Once you've folded over your cardstock, you should get a diagonal line where each edge connects. We're going to be pressing that together and then cutting that off. Don't worry too much about how it looks because we will be putting another sheet over top to mask it all. Now I've cut out another piece of cardstock that's slightly smaller than our original size. This is going to go over top of the back in order to create a seamless finish for the journal cover. I'm just putting more double-sided tape on both pages and then placing them together and we're finished our cover. So now we have all of our pages ready to go for our journal. As you can see, I created an extra little page that says this book belongs to. Now we're going to assemble all of these together. First, you're going to want to measure how much binding wire you actually need and all of the excess you are going to cut off with some pliers and then fold over that little extra metal edge so it doesn't poke out. Now to assemble your journal, the method that I've seen online and that I've used before is to bring your back sheet to the front before clamping. So first you're going to be adding the watercolor paper to the binding rings. Here I go in with a pouch page that I made and then my first intro sheet, then my cover and then the backing. Now we take this to the back of the mini cinch and we clamp it all together. You just have to push down hard enough on the handle to close the rings. You don't want to overdo it, but you also don't want to leave a gap in between the wires. So as you can see, the journal is all clamped now and it's finished. Just bring your back page to the back and your notebook is complete. So now I'm going to give my thoughts on what I think about the mini cinch and in comparison to the regular cinch. So I paid around $100 for my mini cinch. I see now that you can get it on Amazon for $89 Canadian um, and Michaels has it for $129 Canadian but you can use a coupon on that site. So it's pretty pricey and if you're someone who's not going to use this very frequently definitely doesn't seem to be worth the price as it's essentially a hundred dollars for a hole punch. Um, the regular cinch itself which has a few
few more features and can create bigger journals quicker. Runs around $142 to $146 Canadian on Amazon. It is a bigger item with more features, so it just depends on what you're looking for. Personally for me, I make journals to sell and to give to friends, so I am using this frequently enough where I feel like I'm getting my money's worth. But if you're someone who's looking to only make a one or two journals, it definitely doesn't seem to be worth the price. I do think it's a good tool and it punches really well. I do wish when you did more bulk sheets that it did a crisper cut because sometimes you get those edges that fold over and it's not really as professional looking as it could be. One thing that I wish the Mini Cinch did have, especially for its price, is accessories. I wish it came with at least a few binding wires so you can try it out, but instead you have to buy everything else separately and the price does add up. The binding wires that I bought were about $30. You can get them for bulk on Amazon for much cheaper, but it's still kind of annoying to buy this expensive machine and it doesn't come with anything to start you off. Anyways. Thank you for watching. I hope this helped. If you're thinking of getting a mini cinch or if you have one and you're learning to make journals, let me know what you thought down in the comments and I'll see you next time.